networks, stations, channels. These three words are all interchangeable, and sometimes they're not. Yep, these three words can also mean very different things, so it can get really confusing as we move forward. But I'll try my best to define the terms in the respective contexts. Welcome to the third video in this five-part series, TV Advertising. Did you know that TV transmission is divided into broadcast network, cable network, and satellite network? I didn't know that. Growing up, my sister and I would help out at our parents' restaurant right after we got off school and into the weekends. So we rarely had the opportunity to watch TV. So now I feel like I've been living under a rock all this time. In this video, we will be focusing on broadcast network and cable network since satellite network offers pretty much the same contents as cable network. Broadcasting TV or broadcast network is the traditional method of watching TV where the signal is transmitted by radio waves. So as long as you have an antenna, you're able to watch the shows programmed by the broadcast network. Stations or channels such as ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and PBS are all broadcast stations and are free to watch. Since there is no paywall and everyone has access to it, it's able to appeal to a larger audience than cable network. And because broadcast network is able to reach a wider audience, advertising on this network will cost much more than advertising on a cable network. Cable television or cable network offers a more premium TV watching experience with hundreds of channels and shows that you otherwise cannot find on broadcast network. They are also capable of attracting a very specific audience with specific programs. Stations or channels such as MTV, AMC, Disney Channel, Comedy Central, and Food Network are all hidden behind a subscription fee with a cable provider, and the service requires installation of cable wiring. Fun fact. Although cable network was developed to provide better reception in rural areas, there was a widespread impression in the early days that the monthly fee will support the network, which in turn would translate to a commercial-free experience. The assumption was logical because the early cable networks or channels like HBO, Showtime, and Stars were all commercial-free. So now, in the 21st century, when people discovered that once peaceful period when there were no commercials, you end up with angry comments like this all over the internet. There are six primary ways which you can advertise on the television. Spot advertising, overlay advertising, promotional advertising, TV guide channel advertising, community channel advertising, and infomercial. Since we're talking about two different networks, I want to make a quick mention here that to buy airtime on a broadcast network or channel, we can just contact the station directly. To buy cable channel airtime, you need to contact the cable provider to choose the specific network that you want to advertise on. Spot advertisements are the typical commercials you see during commercial breaks, either in the middle of programming or between shows. Spot advertisement is also the only one of the six forms of advertising to play during the first run of prime time shows. The other formats of TV advertising are usually played during the day or on syndicated programs or reruns. Overlay advertisements, also called ad crawl, are ads that run on the bottom of the screen during the show. You see this a lot on weather channels. Promotional advertisements are short, 10-second ads placed right before a show. It plays almost like it's part of the show. Closed captioning hours provided by 1-800-DENTIST. We take every smile personally. 
If you've made a resolution to take better care of your teeth this year, we can help. Call or visit us online today. 1-800-DENTIST. We take every smile personally. Well, who would have thought that uh, stopping... TV Guide Channel advertisements are ads displayed above the TV listings as viewers browse through the schedules for TV shows. Introducing Carbona's Dye Magnet, the revolutionary laundry cloth you just drop in every load. Look, colors always bleed a little, turning your water to laundry soup. But drop in Dye Magnet and it grabs that dye, cleaning up the water so your clothes stay looking newer longer. Community Channel Advertisements Sometimes there will be a channel in your local area that runs only commercials. These ads are full screen, 15 seconds long, run approximately once every hour for 24 hours, and up to 740 times a month. Infomercials are 30 minutes of paid commercials that normally run overnight, but sometimes during the day as well. They can be a very effective form of advertising because you have 30 minutes to talk about your product. You can demonstrate all the features and benefits and offer testimonials. There's also less competition than a regular short advertising spot. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat. The RV. ShamWow holds 12 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. The cost of running a TV commercial depends on several factors. Ad production. Producing a commercial is far more complex than creating an ad for print or radio advertising because it has to sound and be visually engaging. The production involves hiring a copywriter to write a script a musician to write a jingle, a voice actor to narrate, or a commercial actor to perform, a film director, a film editor, and the expenses for professional video and audio equipment. A low budget commercial can range from $1,000 to $5,000 and save up to 70% at close to 75 stores. Shoppers can enjoy a full weekend of fun events, including the Looks for Less fashion show, hosted by Emmy winner Carson Kressley on Saturday, May 2nd. And you can enter to win a 2015 Ford Mustang, only at Asheville Outlet's grand opening weekend celebration, beginning Friday, May 1st, with a Kids' Day, May 3rd. Asheville Outlet's real brands on real savings. I-26 at exit 33. A mid-budget commercial can range from $5,000 to $10,000. Professor McCauley channeled my passion to help others into my life's work. Excellence as embodied by our professors and the connection they make with students. Professor Bazant helped us master the language of numbers. There are many measures of excellence, and they're inspiring our students every day. Hear more from our students at palmbeachstate.edu slash stories. A high-budget commercial can range from $10,000 to more than $100,000. Bringing with it injuries from falls on snow and ice. We shall wait out the storm and leave our injuries to the adjuster. No, the adjusters won't wait out the storm. They bring the storm. You, you fractured your ankle on the unshoveled walkway. And you, your wrist on icy, unsalted steps. But the adjusters refuse to pay. Who made them pay? Attorney Tom Sparks of the North. These figures might seem out of reach, but keep watching this video and I will show you just how you can create a decent commercial for under $500. Also, instead of hiring freelancers, local television stations usually have their own in house production company, which can be a more cost effective alternative to producing a commercial. Length. You can run your commercials by 10, 15, 30, or 60 seconds. The longer it is, the more expensive. In some cases, you could even buy two 60 second ads back to back to dominate the two minute long commercial break. A commercial break or a commercial block is typically two to four minutes long. 
Now, logically, one might think that the longer the commercial and the more exposure you get is a good thing, right? Well, in today's society where we have the patience and attention span of a goldfish, TV networks are gradually reducing their commercial breaks to as short as one minute because long commercial blocks are turning viewers away. Fox has been selling commercial lengths as short as 6 seconds. In fact, a 15 second commercial is becoming more valuable to advertisers. With the decrease in commercials and potential advertisers, the price for running commercials are now increasing to compensate for differences. Network Rating The network, or channel, rating represents the size of the audience in a survey by Nielsen Media Research. As of May 2019, a rating of 1 is equivalent to about 1.5 million viewers. A show with a rating of 3.5 will have about 5.25 million concurrent viewers. As you can see in these tables, shows in the broadcast networks can easily achieve higher ratings than shows in the cable networks. This is why advertising with broadcast networks is generally more expensive. The Sunday Night Football was the most expensive show to advertise in 2012, with a rate of $545,000 for a 30 second ad. That price rose to $650,000 in 2016 and another increase to $728,000 in 2017. Geographical Reach Both broadcast networks and cable networks have the ability to air commercials either within the local area or nationally. But the two networks also have their differences. Broadcast networks, or channels, sell their commercials by designated market area. A DMA is a region where the particular population receives the same TV channels and radio station broadcasts. For example, I live in San Jose, California. As represented by the happy face in this picture, the DMA consists of several other cities, shown here in red and blue. And this is why advertising on broadcast networks is expensive, because it has a very broad reach. Cable networks use a more refined method by allowing you to target a smaller geographic area called zones. For example, I live in San Jose, California. The city San Jose is a zone. San Jose is one of 15 cities in the county of Santa Clara. Santa Clara is one of the nine counties in the San Francisco Bay Area. San Francisco Bay Area is a region. With cable networks, you can also advertise by a region which is the same as DMA in broadcast networks. If you want to advertise on the broadcast networks, you can purchase airtime directly from your local broadcast stations or channels. If you want to advertise on a specific cable network or channel, you need to contact a cable provider. One very important thing to note is that your commercial will only show up with the cable provider you're advertising with. For example, if you're advertising on Food Network with Comcast Xfinity, your commercial will not run on Food Network broadcasted from other cable providers. This is a major disadvantage for cable advertisers because some big cities are served by multiple cable companies, and this audience segmentation will thin out your reach. Day part. A day part is a standard division of a 24 hour into segments for scheduling programs and commercials. Morning, daytime, early fringe, primetime access, primetime, late news, late fringe, and overnight. The primetime is between 7 to 11 p.m. It's the time when people just got back from work, ate dinner, showered, and just wanted to relax in front of the TV. It's also when the rate of advertising and the number of viewers are at the highest because the period coincides with the broadcasting of new episodes. Here's an example of the rate during prime time on high rated shows. Outside of prime time is called fringe time when the rate of advertising and the number of viewers are lower. Infomercials are typically broadcasted during the overnight hours 
the rate for a 30 minute infomercial is about $4,000 as opposed to a conventional 30 second spot national advertisement that costs $115,000 during prime time. By default, your airtime is left to the discretion of the TV station through a method called run of schedule. If you want your commercial to run near a specific show, you will need to pay a premium to do so. With broadcast networks, you can buy spots with specific shows at specific times. With cable networks, you usually don't have such option. Days of the week. Friday and Saturday are known to have lower viewership. In fact, Friday nights is also referred to as Friday night death slot in the TV advertising industry. Friday night signals the start of the weekend. Since people tend to go out with friends on Friday nights, new movies releasing on Fridays, and Friday night football games at schools. There are so many reasons why Friday is not a good day to air new episodes. Saturday is also bland, featuring many reruns of shows premiered over the weekdays. Competition Supply and demand will drive the prices up. The presidential election is an example where you have to compete with various political campaign ads for a spot. A rate increase also almost always starts in the fall to coincide with the premieres of new seasons and new shows. Finally, the fourth quarter of the year is typically the priciest because everyone wants to get his or her foot in the door right before the holidays. January is the cheapest time of the year to advertise. Frequency versus reach. Frequency is the number of times a person sees your commercial. An analogy of this is like a person presenting to the same group of people a lot. Reach is the number of people who see your commercial. An analogy of this is like a person presenting to a lot of different people. With a limited budget, do you want to reach a thousand people and have them see your commercial 10 times? Or do you want to expose 10,000 people to your commercial with a single run? In TV advertising, frequency is the name of the game. Not everyone is a potential customer, so you don't have to try to reach everybody. Advertising with broadcast networks may allow you to reach a lot of people, but it's very expensive. On the other hand, advertising with a cable network allows you to reach your targeted audience while building frequency, because it's much more affordable. The best way to create familiarity with your product or service is to advertise often within a short period of time. Frequency Discount Most stations offer up to 10% in discounts when you sign a contract with them, which could be 3, 6, or 12 months long. Negotiation Shop around first to compare the prices and network ratings, then haggle with sales representatives to agree to me in the middle. For example, Station A might sell you a 30 second spot for $200 on their morning news which has a rating of 1.0. Station B might sell you a 30 second spot for $200 on their morning news which has a rating of 2.0. Remember that a rating of 1 is equivalent to about 1.5 million viewers? Clearly, Station B offers more value at the same price. Additional costs. By simply advertising, there is no way of knowing how many of your new customers learn about you from your TV commercials, but you can learn to track your leads with the following two methods. Vanity URL. A vanity URL is a short memorable customized link that redirects users to another landing page. For example, your website might be www.yourwebsite.com. That might be too long to remember. An alternative is to condense that to www.yourweb.com. If the TV channel you're advertising on is Animal Planet, you can name the URL to www.yourweb.com slash animal. If you're offering a special promotion only to your viewers, you can name it to www.yourweb.com slash 10% to get a 10% discount. 
A domain name will typically cost less than $15 a month. Call tracking number. Another way of following your lead is with a call tracking number. This number is different from your everyday number and is created so you're able to track it back to your TV ad campaign. A call tracking number will typically cost around $30 a month. Other forms of advertising. Other form of advertising on a TV includes product placement advertising, which is when a business pays a show or a movie to have their products or services showcased. Full disclaimer, this video is in no way sponsored by Comcast. While conducting my research, I stumbled onto a feature on Comcast's website that allows you to create your own ad campaign on the fly. It's still in beta, so I did encounter some bugs, but otherwise it gives you a rough idea of how much it costs to run a 30 second commercial. Remember early in the video when I said that I would show you how to produce a decent commercial without breaking your budget? This is it. On the website, you start off by entering your zip code and selecting the radius where you want to advertise. You are then given the choice to choose your target by their household income, interest, lifestyle, gender, and age. You then have to enter your business information, choose your campaign flight dates, and specify the budget you have in mind. This page shows you the amount of commercials you can purchase with your current budget, the number of households you can reach, and the number of networks or channels you will reach. In this first example, with the budget of $1,000, I was able to air 81 commercials within a 4 mile radius, with each commercial costing around $12. On my second attempt, I narrowed my focus to just 1 mile radius, and the rate shot up to $29 per commercial. This third example was taken a few days later, because I was having too much fun with it, I actually broke the website. This time, I used a budget of $3,000 and a target of 1 mile radius, and the rate was $30 per commercial. On my fourth try, I expanded my target to within a radius of 10 miles, and the rate dropped dramatically to $15 per commercial. On my fifth attempt, I changed my target audience to those with a household income of $100,000 a year and the rate went up to $44 per commercial. On my final attempt, I changed my targeted audience again to those with a household income of $200,000 a year, and the rate increased to $47 per commercial. I suppose the more narrow your focus, the more expensive, and the more affluent your targeted consumers are, the more expensive the ad will be. After that, you would have to create an account and upload your video. If you don't have one, Comcast can help you produce your commercial for just $500. How good is the quality of the commercial? I'll let you be the judge. Tired of clogged caulk tubes? Wasting half used caulk? Not again. Let me try. There's gotta be a way around this. When you've got clogged caulk tubes, you need Tubanu. Tubanu is your solution. Just cut, cap, and caulk. Works on plastic, cardboard, and metal tubes. Order yours today with free shipping at tubanu.com. Pretty good, right? Keep in mind that with the Comcast Spotlight TV Ad Planner, you have no control as to what channel or day part your commercials will air, which may be the reason why it's so affordable. Aside from the traditional TV broadcast, most networks also stream online, and you can also advertise on their websites. The lead time or reservation deadline is usually a few days before the actual airing, but when there's an election, big holiday, or season premieres for popular shows, 
expect your ad campaigns to be delayed as the market will be saturated with ads. Remnant Space Advertising Remnant spaces are the slots that the networks are not able to fill and can be purchased at up to 90% off the original price. When talking about TV advertising, these remnant spaces are usually overnight or on the weekends when there are fewer viewers. So what is the outlook for TV advertising? Is it still worth your time and money? According to a 2017 report released by Nielsen Media Research, an average American spends about 4 hours watching TV each day. This is significantly more than the average of 96 minutes spent listening to the radio or 30 minutes reading the newspaper. However, a 2015 report from Ericsson Consumer Lab also revealed that 52% of Americans started channel surfing or used other digital devices when the commercials started playing. Another study conducted by Leichmann Research Group in 2018 showed that a lot of people are cutting the cord with cable providers and switching over to internet streaming services like Hulu and YouTube. Homes with a cable subscription in 2018 is around 78%, down from around 86% in 2013. Broadcast networks, on the other hand, is also seeing drops in prime time audience of nearly 20% between 2017 and 2018. Many networks are cutting down on the commercial lengths to run a less cluttered program while raising the price to compensate for the discrepancies. Television Pros So what are the perks for advertising on the television? Reach On both broadcast and cable networks, you can advertise on a national scale. Focus on local customers On cable networks, you can specify which zones you want to advertise and narrow your focus to as small as one mile radius. Effective targeting on cable networks, you can target your audience by their interest. Creativity Unlike radio and print advertising, TV commercials convey your message through sight and sound. It's up to you to shape the character and mood of your commercial. Front and Center Commercials reach viewers when they are the most attentive, although this is typically reserved for the first 15 seconds of commercial break. Established Trust When people wear a suit or a lab coat, they show authority. Even if it's just a paid actor wearing a lab coat, people will be inclined to believe every word he or she says. This does not mean you should go around lying to your customers. Also, hiring a celebrity will make you an instant winner. Negotiable Price Shop around first to see the rates different networks have to offer then negotiate with the sales representatives for a fair price. Promotions People love to save. It's proven to be more effective than just advertising. Television Cons So what are the disadvantages for advertising on the television? Cost Producing a commercial is costly. Airing it during prime time is even more expensive. Short retention If you only run your commercial once and people didn't catch everything, it's gone forever. Distraction According to the studies, more than half of all viewers change channels or are preoccupied by other things during commercial breaks. Changes Imagine Geico's 15 minute could no longer save you 15% or more on car insurance. They would have to reshoot the entire commercial. Audience Segmentation If you're advertising on a cable network, remember that your ad will only run with a specific cable provider. In an area that has many cable providers, your audience then becomes fragmented. Tracking ROAS It's difficult to track where your customers are coming from unless you go out of your way to create a vanity URL or buy a call tracking number to track your leads both of which are not provided by TV stations. Okay, I believe we've covered everything we needed to know about TV advertising. In the fourth part of the series, we will be covering direct mail advertising. 
If you're interested in advertising on television, you have to be determined to invest a lot of money into it, or it will not yield any results. Although it might be logical to advertise outside of prime time spots and on syndicated programs to save money, if no one is watching, you might actually end up losing money. So when possible, consider advertising on both prime time and fringe time. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.